I can you see my slides? Looks good. Yeah. Great. Uh, okay, great. So, hi, I, I'm Paul Dunphy from uh, OneSpan, and I'm here with Isaac Patka from Bloom. And we're going to talk about the, the banking and finance thing that we chair together at, at DIFF. Um, so we'll show you some slides that basically cover the motivation of why we created the group, give you a bit of a sense of what's been happening so far, and share some aspirations of how we hope it might evolve in the future. Um, so basically, we, we created the group because we, we wanted to focus on the, the demand side of a self-sovereign identity, or SSI. And there's a lot of really good engineering go work going on in SSI, but we were sort of curious about the pressures from the other side of the fence, since some specific industries are very likely to have their own demands on what SSI techniques and tools will need to look like in practice, since they have their own norms that have evolved over many years. So we thought banking and finance was one good example of this kind of industry. Um, but it's also interesting in and of itself, because it's a domain with a lot of potential for SSI uptake because it's in the midst of its own digital transformation right now in terms of new kinds of automation, but also thinking about new platforms through which to deliver its services. Um, and furthermore, it's also quite a challenging domain to gather requirements from because of the, the diversity of organizations in banking and finance. So you might have some banks that are hundreds of years old, you know, fintech companies that are fresh off the block in terms of a couple of weeks. Um, new kinds of finance entirely emerging, you know, enabled by blockchains. And also you have regulators in there as well that are trying to get a handle of what's going on, um, but also have a great influence too. So to us, it seemed interesting and, and quite worthwhile to try and find some common ground here. So the goal of the SIG really is to, to find a place for any of the above kinds of folks to come together, share experiences and think through uh, what future products and services might need from SSI technology. So it's not just about how technology shapes an industry, it's also how the industry might need to consume the technology too. Um, and also we have uh, good debates on, on topics of interest. Uh, so our group right now is quite an interesting mix of people. I'd say our regular attendees are, are mainly sort of technology providers, um, but we also have really great contributions from legal experts, uh, companies that are early adopters in the SSI, in the financial sector. And beyond that, on our email list, we also have an even more diverse crowd, including sort of large banks from the US and Europe as well. Um, so we're always looking for more members, but we're, we're quite excited. Um, so that said, um, look, if you're, if you're thinking about the future challenges of onboarding, KYC, identity verification in, in the context of banking and finance, and um, please do look us up and consider to join one of our meetings. Uh, obviously, we're open to new members, and I, I don't believe you need to be a member of DIFF to join. So right now, we're meeting every two weeks via Zoom. And typically, the meetings come in a, a couple of flavors. And, and one is that we get an invited speaker from a, a company of interest to come and share some insight on, on some recent news or, or work they've been looking at. Another is more of a discussion focused meeting where we can debate some topics that have come up in previous meetings or we try to make sense of speakers that have come before and try and sort of take better notes. Um, so the group's accessible to a wide range of people and job functions. So it, it, it's um, whether you're into products or marketing or, or strategy or you are a technical person, quite certain you can come and get a handle on some of our conversations that we have. There's a, a couple of URLs here I can give you to, to find us. Um, the mailing list there is where you can uh, find news about our meetings and also uh, find some of the chatter that goes on uh, in between those meetings as well. We have a wiki page that has a, a log of uh, the meetings that we've had, the agendas, some notes and the recordings. Um, so the easiest way to find that is from the DIFF homepage. If you go to the homepage, uh, select groups, SIGs, banking and finance, you can find lots of information there. Um, so on that note, I'll pass over to Isaac and I think he'll talk about uh, some of the things we've seen so far. Yep, thanks. So uh, in the we started the group um, last quarter and what we already had a couple potential early adopters from the finance industry come in and just talk about 
um, what their company is, why they are interested in self-sovereign identity. Um, and we've had a couple different flavors of that so far. So the first speaker we brought in um, was from a company called Opportune. They are a fairly large you know, publicly traded uh, lender that primarily serves like low to moderate income individuals. Um, they work on providing like inclusive, affordable financial services um, in, you know, in their target market. So uh, if you go to the next slide, I'll discuss about um, the speaker that we brought in. We brought in, a, so Tyson had reached out to us to learn more about um, what their company can leverage from the decentralized identity space. He's been tracking it for a while, um, but wanted to understand like, is, the, is it mature enough to implement? How can it help them with some of his main concerns? Uh, so Tyson is the VP of security at Opportune. He, uh, some of the things that were most interesting um, to him um, and therefore to our group was the idea of using decentralized identity technology to cut down on the potential liability of data breaches for uh, lenders. Um, a lot of tech providers in the space probably anticipate this as one of their value props, um, but he was able to put some really clear numbers to this. If they're taking custody of information like social security numbers, income addresses, any PII um, under some of the new laws like CCPA, that they can, if they have any sort of breaches whatsoever, they can be fined hundreds to up to like $750 per incident per user. If you have a user base of any significant size, um, that could be a, a business killer. So one thing that they want to understand is how can they cut down on the, on the amount of data that they have to take custody of um, without changing the performance of their product, or in some cases, improving the performance of their products. Um, so in addition to cutting down on just taking liability, taking on data and the liability of taking on data, they also want to understand what the impact is of using perhaps uh, selectively disclosed data um, and feeding it into the same risk models. Uh, their data scientists all are used to um, pulling in like just very you know, uncensored big data sets that they can buy from a bureau or from, from other you know, sources. They're not used to working on data sets that are kind of bucketed uh, where information has been selectively disclosed. So the two main things that, they're, that they would wanna see are uh, say that they are able to take custody of less data. Can they still feed information into their models and do risk pricing uh, just as efficiently? Um, so, yeah, so that was a, you know, an interesting call. We have uh, meeting notes and recording available here. Um, Paul, anything else that stood out to you from Tyson's call? Uh, no, I think you got it right there. Okay, cool. And uh, the next group that we brought in, we brought in um, Prime Trust. So Prime Trust provides financial services to a lot of crypto companies in the space. Um, they provide payment rails, custody services, compliance as a service. Um, they do this for like Binance and Bittrex, Trust Token, uh, quite a number of companies in the space. They handle a very large amount of funds and have um, and are primarily interested in how decentralized identity applies to KYC. Um, so yeah, next slide. We brought in um, so Scott Purcell, who's the CEO of Prime Trust, joined us for a Q and A um, on the same call. We actually also had Alan Meyer, who's the CEO of Cognito, which is a KYC providing company. Um, it was a uh, uh, very, I'd encourage anyone on the call to click the link and listen to the back and forth discussion we had. Um, it was some of the highlights include the fact that they see KYC as just you with KYC, you really just have to be showing the regulators that you're trying your best. There's no very specific bar that says you have to collect this information um, and this information at this interval to be sure that you're dealing with a non sanctioned individual who's not laundering money. It's all um, you just have to prove to regulators that you are doing, uh, that you're trying hard and probably aren't letting any fraud get through. So that makes it very challenging for tech providers to be able to meet a set threshold because there isn't exactly a very specific threshold to meet. Um, if we as technology providers in the SSI space can provide a credential, like a, a KYC or AML status in the form of a credential, um, they would be happy to use that. Um, However, like, like I said, uh, actually understanding where that threshold is, is going to require a lot of engaging with um, banking agencies and government, um, government regulations. So um, something that I, I see Christians on the call, um, something that Christians have been bringing up to the group is that we might not necessarily need to 
um, just satis just take an existing solution and swap out how the data flows with verifiable credentials and DIDs um, because it what might be uh, more useful for the actual industry is to go back and understand what the true intention of the KYC AML laws are and show how we can satisfy that with VCs and SSI um, rather than trying to just like supplement the existing process. All right, on a next slide. Uh, and so all of these information from these uh, speakers that we're bringing in are available on the group Notion. We're also working on putting together a wiki as we collect information about what are the different regulations that technology providers should know about, um, what are the different governing bodies in different parts of the world. All this information is being collected on our wiki, um, which is you know, publicly accessible, of course. Um, and sometimes we have calls that are specifically dedicated to just diving into a certain topic um, and dividing up work to fill out um, certain parts of the wiki that would be useful for other companies. Uh, right, so um, so what's coming up in the in the next year? So in a group like ours, obviously the most important event is always the, the next meeting. And our next meeting is on Thursday, so two days from now. And we're going to have Andy Tobin from Ebenim with us. Um, reason being, Ebenim recently had some interesting news in relation to uh, testing verifiable credentials in, in the, the UK financial regulator sandbox. Um, so hopefully in that meeting, we can learn more about sort of Andy, uh, Evanim's sort of interest in that area. Um, you're still very welcome to join at, at this point. You can turn up. Um, secondly, for next year, we're, we're still quite a modestly sized group. So we're always looking to expand the size and the diversity of the membership. Um, and so we're hoping to reach out to more people and, and grow this uh, next year or this year, I guess, time flies. Um, I think we'll host more problem solving sessions with companies who are early adopters of SSI technologies uh, in the banking and finance space. Uh, so we currently have some members that are interacting with uh, the Ethereum Foundation and others on the topic of KYC. And we think this is quite a nice model that we'd like to replicate with other organizations on, on other topics too within that space. Um, so if this is something that sounds relevant uh, to you, please do reach out. I think finally as well for the coming year, I'd like to really get to the point where we can get the scale and energy to collaboratively offer advisories or guidance based on some of the, the work in our knowledge base. Because when we look through it, there's some really nice sort of donations of knowledge in there. Um, and there's some like the results from nice discussions in there. So it would be really nice to get to the point where we can at strategic points, parcel that up and sort of release that a bit more formally and um, to sort of represent the group. Um, so yeah, lots to do. And, and, and that's it from me. So um, thanks for listening. Um, if you have any questions on that, do reach out to myself or Isaac uh, and do check out the, the couple of links uh, here at the bottom that I'm repeating again. So yeah, thanks and hopefully see you at one of our meetings soon. One other thing to add, is there, is this, is the meeting on the diff calendar or how can we, um, I think we should be good to post like, uh, is it on the mailing list? Do we have a link to like the calendar invite? Sure, I can share that in the chat uh, imminently. Great, thanks. Awesome, thank you very much. So yeah, if anyone is interested to join the product managers of this group, you can usually find a uh, mailing list and also the, also the page. <laughs>